Occasionally you'll run into the problem of missing files in Lightroom Classic. You go to click on a file and the image has this little exclamation point up in the upper right hand corner. You click on the image anyway, because you can see it right there. It's the image is right there. But then when you go to edit it, a black bar comes up that says the file could not be found. Still not convinced, you click on one of the edit panels and realize they're all grayed out. You've just lost an image in Lightroom Classic. I'm going to show you how to find your lost images and how to prevent it from happening in the first place. All that coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer. Today we're going to talk about that troublesome exclamation point that you sometimes see on your images. Now it's not good news when you see it. So we need to understand what Lightroom is doing with your images and how to prevent it from happening in the future. When we click on that little exclamation point, a dialog box comes up with the name of the file and letting you know that the original file can't be found. So how did that happen? How did it happen in the first place? Let's start at the beginning. Even if you're using the best practice of loading all your images and your catalog onto that same folder into the same hard drive all the time, mistakes can happen. What's happened to me is I've had my card reader attached and I'm really excited to take a look at my images in Lightroom. I insert the card into the reader and then I start to do the import. I see the pictures come up, they look great. Bam, hit import and they start importing. I'm able to go through the images, look at them, enjoy them, do whatever I want, edit them, everything's great. I don't notice anything different of my typical workflow when I do this. But what happened was I didn't load them in the correct spot. In this scenario, what I failed to do was double check where the images were being loaded. The default in my system is the pictures folder on the laptop's hard drive. Now, if you go back to my very first video in this beginning Lightroom Classic series about loading images in your very first catalog, if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up here and I'll also leave a link down in the description for you to go check that out when you want. But in this video, I talk about always checking where your images are going to get imported to. That's a great practice to get into, but occasionally you can get distracted and the images load right up and you think all is great. You can work with them in Lightroom, you can export them, edit them in Photoshop, so everything works just like normal. So you would never know that those images were loaded into the wrong spot. However, when you take your catalog to another computer or you have to change out your laptop someday, you start getting those little exclamation points showing up on your images. This means that Lightroom doesn't know where those images are. In this case, you need to find the images and put them where they belong into that main folder and you need to tell Lightroom where they're at. Here's how I do this on the Mac. So I'm in my computer here and we can take a look at our images in this small catalog that I built just for this demonstration. We have a few images here, we can see them, they're located in our catalog as normal. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to load some images. So I got a card here and we'll go ahead and load this in, press this into the card reader, go over to import and we'll see that the card comes up and these are the images that are on here. Now, normally when you import, you always make sure of where the images are coming from, like in this case, the card, what we're going to do with them, copy, and we're going to bring them over into where. This is the most important part, where these images are going to reside after this. So in normal cases, you would load all of your images into the hard drive. So for instance, I have an attached hard drive here, and this is what we're going to use. This is where you normally would load them up. But sometimes, maybe your hard drive isn't attached. Maybe you are in a hurry and forgot. And so what happens is, in my case, the images will default into the pictures folder inside of my Mac. So we're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna make a folder here on the desktop. We're gonna call it LRC, and we're gonna import those images there. So what we're doing is we're importing the images slightly to the wrong spot, because when we've imported them now, now that we, we can work on them, everything's fine. The computer notices them, everything's great. But if it ever comes to a point where you wanna take this whole catalog to another computer, or if you wanna uh, 
back, uh, back up this catalog, or if you want to take this catalog and utilize it on your computer, but you've changed computers. Because what's happened is we've sent these images into the computer hard drive, not our standalone hard drive. So since we've done that, that's a problem because everything looks fine up until when we actually need those images. So this might be down the road that you're going to find this, that you've changed computers and you load your catalog in, and now you start getting these exclamation points that tell you the image is lost. So what we'll do for just the sake of discussion is we're going to take this here, and this is our folder of those images. We can see those are the flower images that we have up on the screen. We're going to take this and just move it out of that folder to a different spot. Okay. So it's no longer in that folder. And now what happens, Lightroom sees this and says, hey, wait a minute, these pictures are missing because it gives us a little exclamation point. So what we need to do is we need to find these images. So it's not going to be as easy as we're doing it today because uh, we just did it. We know exactly where they are. But in the future, as you go on, if you do this one year and then three years later, you go to find your images, how are you going to do it? So this is how I do it. And this is, again, Mac software. So the PC, I'm sure, has the ability to find files. I just don't have it accessed right here. So the way we do this is we click on a file and we go into the main library. And over here, we have metadata. If you don't have it, you can always pull this little triangle down and it'll give you the metadata. The file name is right there. It's also down here. So if you want to look at it, you can write it down or memorize it. But I find it easy going over to the metadata, right click and copy what that file is. So now on the Mac, we got to go to a finder and we're going to simply use this tool here, which is a search tool. And we're going to just command V and press that in. And now this image comes up and we can see, okay, that's where that image is. And down here gives you the hierarchy of how this thing is listed. So it's in my computer, it's on the desktop, it's in this folder, here's the number. So what I do sometimes, if it's a really long string and I'm not really sure I'm gonna remember it, I don't feel like jotting it down, I can do Shift Command 4 and do a little screen capture just of that hierarchy so I can find that later, okay? That's where that is. I can always reference that if I need to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go find that image. So we hit the exclamation point, and then we're going to tell Lightroom that we want to locate this image. So let's locate it, and we know that it's on the desktop, and here it is in this folder. And we just click on that first one because that was the first one that we looked at. We want to make sure they're coordinated. So we just hit select, and then Lightroom says, ah, I know where they all are then. Not only do I know the first one, but I know where the rest of them are, which is really handy. So when you're working in batches, all you have to do is click the first one. And it'll grab all the other ones in that folder too. Okay, so here are all the images. Everybody's happy. So now let's, this is good, but the problem is now we've told Lightroom where they're at so we can find them, but it doesn't solve the overall problem. If when you have a computer crash or you need to change out the hard drive or whatever, you need to put these in the right spot. So what we're gonna do is come over to this hard drive and we're gonna drag this folder over into this drive. And in fact, we're gonna put it into the find. So let's do this, let's click find and open, and let's drag that folder right there. So now that folder's there, we're done with it here, so we can drag it into the trash, and we're good to go. So now we're in Lightroom again, and again, the exclamation point comes up and tells us that we've lost an image, right? Because we, we just moved it. So let's go in here, and we go to locate it, click locate and we know that it's in that main drive under find and there's the folder right there we click on this first one and hit select and now all of the images are found and and they're in the right spot so not only can you find them but you can also just grab all those images and put them in the correct spot and you can always test it by you know unplugging your drive or however you want to do it to test to see if that's not going to if the images are there uh, taking the drive to another computer or such. So another thing that can happen sometimes when you're in Lightroom is that you're going to say, oh, I want to I want to rename my files. So let's say you're taking an image and you're going to uh, send it to somebody and you want to rename it to tell them, oh, you know, this is my favorite file or whatever. So let's go in here. Let, let's do this first. Let's go into all photographs. And we see this file here. We see that it's, this is the name of it. We can also confirm it over here. 
Now let's go over into photos, right to direct hard drive, go into the 2022, and we find this first image and we're gonna say, oh, that's Tetons. So let's go in here and do Tetons, okay? So we've renamed it as far as the Mac is concerned. And we hit okay, and right on, we got them all, it's re renamed, so everything's great. As we come in here, whoops, look what happened. Lightroom doesn't know where that image is because the name's changed. So as we click on this, remember, Lightroom remembers it as this file name, okay? But if, um, let's go ahead and we'll just copy that real quick like. It remembers it as that file name, so we have to locate it and tell it what we did. So we can do it one of two ways. We can hit locate and go into the folder and say, oh, no, no, now it's called Tetons. So if we do that, we can easily end up, and then now Lightroom will say, hey, wait a minute, this is a different name. It's like, yeah, 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 we've renamed it. So in Lightroom, now you can see that that name is called the Tetons. So that's a way that you can find images that you inadvertently renamed outside of Lightroom. If you find you want to rename a file, always do it inside of Lightroom. That way Lightroom knows exactly where that file is. So as an example, we've got this one that's named improperly and we're gonna actually rename it. So you can go up to library and pull down and go to rename photo or another little shortcut is the F2 key and that brings up this dialog box. So let's go ahead and pull this down for a quick second and we're just gonna say custom name and we're gonna take and paste in that file name that we did before so we don't need the NEF extension and that's the file name that it originally was and we'll click OK and now that file has been renamed we can confirm it over here. Another way to do renames that I think is actually pretty cool is you can take any of these files hit that F2 button again and up here you can actually create your own filing system so we go to edit and let's just get rid of custom text for a second here by just hitting delete. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, let's insert the file name, the original file name. Now, I like that because the original file name is gonna always be with this file no matter where it goes. I can rename it something more clever or more descriptive, but the file name will always stay the same. So I always wanna keep the file name attached to my images. So the file name goes, and then we'll do, say, a custom text. You can see up here that we have uh, our file name and then whatever custom text we want. So we hit done. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, uh, now we'll put in Tetons. And you can see what we've done here is it took the original, which was uh, Z9Z5944-HDR, and then we have Tetons right after it. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll start this with an under underline or a dash and that way it kind of looks a little bit more normal as we make our changes. So we can click OK. And now we've renamed this, but we've renamed it. And you can see down here that it's been renamed. And this one will show you, it won't show it all to you because the box is too small, but if you click on it, it'll show you the rest of it. And this gives you an idea what the actual name of this product, of this file is. So this is how you find your images when you've misplaced them, or if they've accidentally gone into a different drive, you can bring them back to where they belong and your Lightroom catalog will always be able to find all of your images. While image sharpness isn't necessary on every image you take, most wildlife images and landscapes can benefit from having extra sharp images. That way you can see every detail in the fur and the feathers. In fact, I might argue that if you shot all your images razor sharp to begin with, then if you wanted to, for say artistic purposes, soften some of the details later, you can. But you can't take a blurry or soft image and make it razor sharp. If you start with sharp images, you have all your options available to you when it comes to the time of the edit. Now that brings us back to creating sharp images to begin with. You can learn how to create razor sharp images, starting with how you capture the images properly in camera, then learn what to do in Lightroom and in Photoshop in post-production to get that sharpness that you want for your images. I've written a book called Razor Sharp Nature Photography that steps you through all the aspects of creating razor sharp images for yourself. 
This is an instantly downloadable ebook where the photographs are large so you can really see the detail, and it's only available on my website, imagelight.com. The Razor Sharp ebook is built for you to download to your computer, your iPad, or your phone, and take it with you out in the field to help answer questions on your next photographic adventure. Go over to imagelight.com and click on the digital products page and order your copy today. I'll leave a link in the description below. So this is how you find an image or a set of images that might be lost. Most times they're not lost completely. Lightroom doesn't know exactly where they are. To prevent this, be diligent about where the images are going when you're doing your import. If someday you put the images in the wrong spot and find out later by seeing that little exclamation point, just copy the file name, do a full computer search for that file, then move it to the proper spot or at the very least, tell Lightroom where that image is by following that locate image dialog box. Should you want to rename images at some point, never do renaming outside of Lightroom. Only rename inside of Lightroom using that rename dialog box that you can access by the pull down menu or using the quick function key F2. Now, if you're finding this content useful, please hit the like button, subscribe, and remember to ring the little bell to be notified of my next video. And you're always welcome to contact me directly at terry at imagelight.com as I answer all of my emails and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Terry Vanderheide.